hello everyone and uh, good morning good evening good day to all of you it's a pleasure and privilege to be in this room with all of you even though it is virtual uh, here i'm going to be sharing with you our thoughts on how do you build an ecosystem for indigenous development and manufacturing of medical devices which are so direly needed at this point of time in the country so let me share my screen and share my thoughts so i come to you with three kinds of experiences i wear three hats at iit bombay one as a professor of mechanical engineering um, second as a head of the school of entrepreneurship but more importantly in this today's context as the founder and the principal investigator of uh, betic which is biomedical engineering and technology innovation center uh, initially it was iit bombay and now it's a network of several partner institutes i'll share with you a little later as we go the the focus of uh, of uh, this session is about how do we create an ecosystem for indigenous development of affordable medical devices which are needed at this point of time if i take a step back and look at the healthcare sector as a whole uh, india has a very large healthcare sector now valued at more than 2 370 billion dollars um, in, in this and next year and has already become the fifth largest employer after agri tech and all other sectors and uh, the great news is that the government of india has now literally doubled the budget for healthcare sector in the last couple of years uh, mostly due to pandemic which has put the focus back on healthcare in some sense and within this sector medical devices for screening diagnosis monitoring treatment surgery assistance or rehabilitation all this play a very important role and without these we can't even imagine the sector as it is the point to note is that because of a large population even though we are spending a lot of money on healthcare sector um and the number of devices that we need uh, are almost on the order of 60000 crore rupees per year but the because of the uh, per capita expenditure of on healthcare which is like less than 1% of the country from where we import the maximum number of devices usa we have to really think about how do we really make healthcare affordable to the average indian in fact indian at the bottom of the pyramid and that's where we if you look at the landscape as a whole our indian indian, indian medical device industry is if i may say somewhat struggling at this stage of stage uh, on one hand we are trying to compete in terms of quality with the western mnc's on the other hand we are trying to compete in terms of cost for low tech devices uh, with the eastern countries um, and government regulation has kicked in but if you look at the medical community as a whole and if you talk to a lot of doctors and we have done that they say we are not necessarily loyal to a particular company or a product if you can give us a product which has better performance better outcome less side effects let's say more suitable for our anatomy and functionality high quality reliability comparable to the best in the world and also available accessible adaptable easily and not, not to mention affordable uh, if you can give us these things we are always ready to look at that is it easy uh, difficult i would say at this point of time the kind of technologies which are available to medtech innovators whether it is artificial intelligence machine learning deep learning medical imaging as a whole all this iot which is industrial uh, internet of things uh, robotics 3d printing all these are giving us you can say a new breath of life to rethink to reinnovate medical devices and uh, so dream of many of us is uh, can we think about designed in india manufactured in india medical products which become global success stories to do so we need to also put together a, a highly interdisciplinary team of you can say stakeholders uh, right from your uh, clinicians doctors radiographers you know caregivers all of them in clinicians category engineers of all hues mechanical electronics software and so on management people quality management financial management business management and also social sciences particularly public health we need to put all these people together experts together to be able to uh, rethink uh, reinvent medical devices in the country now easier said than done because if you look at the journey of a medical device from 
let's say an academic institute to society, uh, it has to go through several technology readiness levels, what is called as TRL, one to nine. And the first few TRLs are in an academic institution where you are creating a new concept and you are trying to demonstrate the concept or by creating a proof of concept, POC. That's the first value of death, but it's not very difficult, not very expensive. Most academic institutions do have facilities for doing that. The next step is to con convert the POC into a prototype, a functional working prototype that you can demonstrate to the clinicians, not, not ready for testing, but just to demonstrate how it will work. Um, it still may have some rough edges, it may have some dangling wires, but it's um, good enough to get the feedback from the clinicians, initial feedback. That is also can be done because at most R&D institutions do have these innovation centers with 3D printers and PCB makers and you know, app builders and so on. The third value of death is a bit challenging because you're talking about converting a prototype into a product. And not just one product, but maybe even a batch of products. Uh, it should look like a finished product. We are using industrial processes, industrial materials, and industrial expertise and skills. Okay. Once you cross this value of death, the next step is fairly, you can say, well known. I'm not saying easy, but it's also difficult. It requires a lot of investment. As you can see, the number of uh, the level of investment that from POC to the, the product stage can go up by five to ten times. But the last stage, because the, now the path is or end is very clear, industry and investors are willing to put money to build the facilities, hire team, you know, do mass production, manufacturing, distribution, and so on. But it's the third value of death, which is essentially conversion of a research prototype into a marketable or commercially viable product, which is where the maximum number of deaths happen in this whole journey. You may ask why, I mean, and the reason is most academics do not really know how to do, you can say, industrial manufacturing. And most of the industries do not know how to convert a research product into the bill of materials, you know, the, you can say, detailed manufacturing steps in the quality, you know, qualifications or quality tests. All these years we have been just been handed over or we're getting licensed technology, which is comes on a platter. But now that you have to do it on our own, we are finding it is a difficult step to do. So what we have done at BITIC uh, in IIT Bombay is to create a very systematic process to cover all these four stages of, of product innovation. We call it as a 4D process, define, develop, deliver, and deploy. And at each stage, a different stakeholder plays the most critical role. For example, at the define stage, the doctor plays a very important role. Like the example which you see in this, uh, this was a rural doctor who uh, came with a problem saying that, uh, when I have, when I auscultate, that is listen to the chest sounds of a patient and I find something that I have not heard before, should I send the patient to a city doctor for a second opinion or can I send the sound of the patient instead of the patient himself or herself? And that's how the problem was defined. And that is how uh, this team, which you see in this picture, came up with a proof of concept uh, by converting a, taking a normal stethoscope, converting the analog sound into digital sound and transmitting that through a laptop into the room via Wi-Fi. That's a proof of concept. That's not a product. You can't take it to market in that shape, right? All the wires dangling and so on. So then you play, uh, go to the next step, which is develop the, a prototype. This prototype, which you see in the picture, is not a fully functional prototype, but it gives an idea to the doctors, okay, this is how it might work. It may have some, some functionality, but not all functionality. And then you go to doctor saying, we can also record the sound, we can enhance the sound, maybe cancel noise, and maybe you can um, share it with uh, your fellow doctors using WhatsApp or, or emailing that. So they get an idea and they give the feedback at this stage. So research has played an important role because now kind of creating a prototype. But then after that, you want to create a startup company, uh, do the tests in accredited labs um, and clinical trials in hospitals, now, this is where academic roles slightly dwindles and you need someone who is actually committed to taking the product forward in the market. So here, entrepreneurs have to come into the picture. And what you see, example of that is the first batch of these products which were produced, I think 10 or 15, and tested in labs and government hospitals. And finally, come to the deploy stage. We are talking about now mass production, distribution. You need tons of money for that. And unless investors come into the picture, you can't go to the market. Investors can be public or private. I mean, 
we are talking about some chunk of money to be available for taking the product to market actually. Now this is a simplified version of the four stage process. What we also done is divided each stage into a number of steps, eight steps to be precise here. And we say that it starts from forming, uh, understanding the market, forming an interdisciplinary team, and then you go and spend a lot of time in the hospitals observing current procedures of diagnosis or treatment, including follow-ups, what kind of a products are being used, what are the pros and cons of that, what is the wish list of the doctors, and you eventually define a problem statement along with what is called as user requirements or functional requirements, um, and also you create initial concepts, uh, play around with that proof of concept, and then you go into the develop stage, which is very well known to engineers, and here is where you actually go into detailed design. You can do a lot of simulation, optimization. You can build your initial prototypes uh, in plastic and maybe even metal and electronics and software. And then go to deliver stage where you have to talk about testing now. Testing for the biological safety, mechanical safety, electrical safety. And these are done. You can do initial tests in our own labs, I mean, academic labs. But finally, when you want to get a, a certificate, you need to go to accredited labs. Okay, And once you prove the safety in the labs, then you go into clinical trials. Again, you have what's called as a pilot trials and pivotal trials. And there are a lot of regulatory procedures and protocols, permissions to be taken, approvals to be taken. And finally, you can get a certification for, you can say, mass production and marketing of the device. right? And the agencies, uh, public and private agencies, who will help you to do this, the deliver part of the stage. And finally, de deploy part, which is fairly well known to businesses. You secure your IPR, um, your property right, intellectual property rights, patents, copyrights, trademarks, all the things. You decide how do you want to commercialize that. And we realize that uh, the commercialization pathways can be as innovative uh, and as varied for each medical device uh, as in the product design stage. So you do all that, create a business plan, decide whether you want to go through a startup route or a technology licensing route or a combination of that. Sometimes we also look at social entrepreneurship uh, through NGOs. So there are multiple ways to commercialize that. You would of course get the funding for starting, penetrating the market and eventually scaling up and continuing the research and development um, uh, so that you keep coming up with better versions of that. So that gives you an entire landscape an entire process, stages and steps for um, taking a product from lab to land or research to reality as it is called. We have done this now and uh, at, at IIT Bombay and to implement the process, we created facilities, uh, as you can see again in design and engineering, uh, in prototyping, plastics and electronics, and even medical grade manufacturing, which means you need to have a clean room, a dust-free room, uh, and also other facilities like sterilization, packaging, labeling, all these need to be created. We have created a basic critical facilities in IIT Bombay and we have partner institutes for doing that. But we're also continuously augmenting these facilities because you need these under one roof. You can't be running to 20 partners for doing 20 different things. And you need these facilities like that in every, we can say, med tech eco hotspot in the country. I mean, Pune and Bangalore and NCR and Bhuneshwar and places like that. Now that was for one, let's say one product, but then we are also talking about creating an ecosystem where you want to push multiple ideas and products. Uh, so you need a pipeline for doing that. And uh, I'm just sharing with you what we have done and you can adapt this in different places uh, based upon local expertise and interest. So we start with a hackathon called MEDA, Medical Device Hackathon, which we'll typically do over a weekend in different places in the country. And uh, what we do in, in these hackathons is to, is to bring all the ideas which we have been gathering over the last one year. And a lot of doctors come to us and say, here is a good problem to solve. Why don't you take it up in Betty? And also we get a lot of applicants saying we want to work in IIT Bombay or Betty. So we bring both this together, you know, problem givers and problem solvers. And then that kind of qualifies the best ideas to take forward. And then we organize a more intensive one week long camp called Medical Device Innovation Camp, which is, it's like day and night, very hard, uh, intensive training, and training by doing. They, these participants have to form teams, go through those uh, four stages and uh, you know all the steps which I mentioned earlier. And by the end of this camp, they would have developed a 
um, working a prototype of a new device to solve an unmet clinical need. And the best of these ideas and the trained people, we give them a one year fellowship in Betik. And the idea is that in one year, they take it from a prototype to a, you can say, you know, first product stage. Um, and we also connect them to various stakeholders by organizing an exhibition called Medex, uh, Medical Device Expo. They meet um, you know, doctors and potential industry partners, investors, even general public who says, oh, this is interesting and can I buy that? So that gives a lot of confidence to innovators to say that, okay, let me now go to market with this. And then they cross a dotted line where it now switches from academia to, you can say, business. And most of the academic institutions have these incubators, business incubators, where they are given space and some initial funding, and they can create a team and now actually get into business. And once it does well, you can get into any regular industry parks and then do your scale up. That's a pipeline. And for a low risk medical devices, uh, uh, all the way from the hospital bed to engineering bench to business to back to hospital bedside, you can cover this entire journey in less than two years for a, you can say, a simple uh, screening device, low risk screening device, you know, like glaucoma screening or cancer screening, whichever you want to look at. So this is the pipeline. And um, let me just show you some nice pictures of uh, how we have done this. Uh, these are the hackathons organized in different parts of the country, um, Kolhapur, Pune, Bangalore, and so on, over the last few years. And in the front row, you'll always see these uh, doctors who are the jury members who actually, you know, give very, very valuable, sometimes, you know, you can say conflicting uh, feedback about uh, what is, what will work and what will not work. But in one, just one weekend, the kind of the quality and quantity of feedback that you get, get is immense. That's the beauty of these hackathons. And then I mentioned to you about Medic, which is uh, which happens over a four days or four or five days. And these are pictures from the Medic event, which you organize in again Bombay, Pune, Nagpur, other places. This year we are doing an e-Medic, which is uh, completely virtual. So teams are in different places. Uh, and remember, each team has one doctor, one designer, one mechanical, one electronics, maybe one pharma or biomedical person, or maybe a business person. And these teams are in different places, but still it is working fine. Uh, it's amazing what this pandemic has done to push the digital, you can say, uh, platforms for, for collaboration as well. Uh, and then the best of these, uh, these prize winners are brought to Betik. Here you can see these our uh, winners or innovators now working very closely with the doctors. Every picture has a doctor and an engineer. And some pictures you also see the patients, like the baby, which was about a smart brace for club foot. You can see on the bottom, uh, a knee ankle foot orthosis. Um, bottom second uh, from the right is a biopsy gun. These are all top doctors of the country, you know, top hospitals. And they're very passionate, they're very committed. And the, these fellows are equally passionate and committed about actually solving the problem and taking it all the way and not giving up uh, midway. Um, I also mentioned to you in the pipeline, the fourth step where we connect them to other stakeholders and medics, uh, which we organize uh, in Betik, um, our own team members organize in different places. Again, we have done. We also participate in, in various other events organized by various agencies. Like in the middle row, you see the India International Science Fair. And you can see former health minister, uh, Dr. Harshwardhan. Uh, you also see our honorable prime minister, when he visited IIT Bombay, we had a special exhibition of medical devices for him. And also we use some of these events to launch new products. Like you see in the bottom right, uh, Dr. Rakakorkar and the director of IIT Bombay launching a diabetic foot screening device. Uh, so this is uh, the, the entire, uh, you can say, portfolio of BT products. You can see head to toe, you can see again diagnosis, screening, monitoring devices, surgical instruments, other treatment devices, assistive rehabilitation devices. And all this uh, red colored text is uh, represent startup companies, uh, which have many of our researchers who have jumped into entrepreneurship themselves. A few are other entrepreneurs who have licensed products from Betik family. And every one of these startup companies has one um, an average funding of about one crore, that is 10 million rupees. And most of them actually have won the BIRAC, which is a, a biotechnology ignition grant, a BIG grant from BIRAC New Delhi. 
Uh, we also are now getting several SMB companies, uh, Indian small and medium companies, who are approaching us and saying that we cannot set up R&D facilities and attract the right kind of manpower. Why don't you become our R&D house? We know the market. We have the distribution channels, manufacturing facilities, but you do a new product development and we'll give you specifications of the product which we know will sell in the market. This has uh, become a very nice, uh, we can say, contribution from us to Indian industry. And some of these are coming back to a second time and third time, which means we are doing something right. And there's a need that we are fulfilling. Finally, I would like to share with you about uh, the ecosystem. And people ask, so how is it possible to build something similar in other institutions and other parts of the country? And we call it as a reinvent ecosystem. How do you go from research to innovation to entrepreneurship? And it has four pillars. As you can see, the first pillar is about the team structure. It's in a way, it is about bringing people of different disciplines together and primarily doctors and engineers together and engineers of different types and management and entrepreneurship, business people and so on. I must tell you also the importance of experience mentors. Uh, these are not mentors who meet once in uh, three months. These are mentors who we can call up at 3 a.m. You know, And uh, these are mentors who have walked the path themselves and they are either technology mentors or business mentors and they're willing to put their skin in the game and actually help these innovators solve critical issues which are guaranteed to be faced in the journey of entrepreneurship. The innovation culture is another very important thing, especially in Indian context. We're all very sensitive about failure, but innovation means taking risk and risk means there's always a chance of failure. So understanding failure, embracing failure, and learning from failure, are very important parts of the culture that have to be built into this ecosystem right from the beginning. And there's a lot than what I'm just saying in half a minute. The way you treat failures, the way you discuss failures, itself is a starting point. And then third is the infrastructure, which is somewhat easier, you can say, to build. But uh, infrastructure in one place is tough to build because you're talking about industrial equipment, processes, the skill, skill sets, and so on. And, um, and it's not easy to put in one place and because you need a lot of investment also for doing that. And who is going to put money there? Academics, government, industry, all of them are shy of putting all the money in one place. And finally, you're talking about procedures. Um, and uh, these quality vision and quality procedures have to be built right from the beginning because medical devices have to be safe and reliable. So you need to, to, to think quality, discuss quality, implement quality in every aspect of whatever you do. And some people come back and say, oh, is it really possible to build something like an academic institution? Our job is to do teaching and research and a bit of, you know, talking like this or consulting industry. How do you build an ecosystem like that? Of course, it is challenging. I can say that in our case, we are always focused on the end user. And preferably, if the end user is a poor patient in a remote um, location, inaccessible place, and if your heart goes out to that and you don't just pity or simply Empathize with those patients, but also you want to do something for them, empathy and actually, you know, compassion, you can say. You want to solve their problems. I think that kind of gives you the kind of contacts, um, unbelievable uh, support, well wishes dropping in from all kinds of, you know, times and places. I think you need to be sincere about the whole thing and somehow this whole thing shapes itself. You just need purity of purpose, if I may say that. Uh, pilot batch manufacturing is still a major bottleneck in the country, and if we can solve that, I think we can see much more, uh, much many more devices going to the market. The third value of death, in a way, is represented by pilot manufacturing facilities and also device testing facilities, all in under one roof, one place. So let me also share that Betik is no longer a one single institution at IIT Bombay. It's now a network of partner institutes, about seven or eight uh, engineering institutes, seven or eight medical institutes. And uh, medical institutes are very valuable to us because here is where we actually identify unmet needs. We go and understand the problem first time, and then we go back and give them uh, get the device to for their feedback and eventually clinical trials. Okay. And now we have many more institutions coming forward saying that we want to build similar ecosystems. Uh, please share your know-how, know-why, and we are very open about it. Anyone is welcome to, to walk into our labs, understand what you're doing, and replicate similar ecosystems, make better ecosystems, because you can learn from our experience and build better ecosystems. And we all need to learn from each other, share our best practices. The last I would like to uh, mention is that uh, we need to also connect all the stakeholders. I've been talking about government, academy, and industry. Government typically is 
their role is to you know fund and facilitate in terms of regulations uh, this uh, industry and academia is typically research and development and if you look at the industry that is typically a manufacturing and distribution and hospitals is uh, where we identify the problems and of course go back to them for uh, for checking whether the problem is really appropriate or not but that is not enough we need four more stakeholders in the room and that is of course incubators as you can understand these are the you can say uh, between uh, academia and industry or academy and government these are uh, public funded public private funding also is possible where these these uh, academics can become like entrepreneurs it's like a soft landing for academics to become entrepreneurs so incubators are very critical component and fortunately at this point in india we have now a large number of i think they say 1000 incubators and accelerators but many of them i can count at least 50 of them are focused on medtech which is a great news the investors no need to mention that especially when you are going to scale up phase where government hesitates to put money because like looking at private investment from public is not really encouraged but here is where you need investors putting large amounts of money a million dollar couple of million dollars for the scale up phase is important then also we need ngos uh, especially for social entrepreneurship and healthcare is a very powerful uh, social entrepreneurship with, you know you can say goal because if you look at sdgs healthcare comes at number 3 but healthcare innovation actually tick marks 5 out of uh, 17 sdgs of united nations and of course media has its own role to play when you're talking about a new product but also going to the product how it was developed what was the ecosystem how are the innovators coming from many of the innovators we find in betting ecosystem are actually coming from middle class families from very ordinary families all over the country you know they may not know how to communicate but they're very committed about taking the device because they know the problem sometimes first hand in their own families or their own areas and they are very uh, powerful you can say right now researcher to innovator to entrepreneur eventually we're looking at them becoming thought leaders for the country okay so that's where i would like to end by saying that we need an ecosystem uh, we call it as reinvent research to innovation to entrepreneurship and we need running partners like what i've shown uh, betik is one example who are in the back, happy to be in the background let this uh, innovators walk the path run the path is a marathon from idea to impact and uh, create success stories of made in india devices which become global success stories we all want to hear those stories so i leave you with uh, information about our lab uh, you can go to bitik.org you will see some examples some links uh, we also have a book on medical device innovation where we have stories of these innovators from bitik Uh, we are now writing in the process of writing a second edition of the book but you can find a digital version in amazon and we also have uh, this iso 13485 certificate which actually eases the path for betik products uh, when you go for let's say government regulations for clinical trials or certification having a quality management system approved internationally like iso 13485 goes a very long way in assuring every stakeholder that what you're doing is in a very systematic manner and um, and and those permissions uh, regulatory permissions become much faster so let me stop here uh, with um, so so let me end here by saying that um, it was an interesting journey different so let me say so let me end by saying that this entire journey from idea to invention to innovation to impact we also call it as bed to bench to business to bedside it is a long journey it is a difficult journey it's expensive journey if you look at total investments um, required for the pathway but it's also an interesting journey in many ways uh, for even for academics like like me um, i find that it has been immensely enriching in terms of understanding real social problems Uh, in healthcare domain putting together a team uh, creating the solutions and actually talking to doctors working with the doctors and clinicians um, and industry and investors to see the device actually in use the stethoscope example which i showed in the beginning um, these uh, the team members never even met each other before the medical device innovation camp which i mentioned but within 2 years they had a product within 2 and 1/2 years the product was in the market the first uh, within two and a half years it was it was in clinical trials and uh, in the last two years 
they have now sold more than 3000 units many of them are in rural primary healthcare centers connecting these rural uh, hospitals to to experts in cities and the difference that it's making to lives of people i think it the kind of joy and satisfaction that you derive in this field is immense i would like to everyone to contribute and also be part of this mission in some sense medtech mission uh, that we can all contribute but i hope this was interesting uh, useful and valuable to to you in some way and if you would like to connect back with us we'll be very happy to see how what we can do together thank you very much